Well, hello and welcome to another Dev Nation. We have another live session today that's going to be super fun. There's already a huge amount of you on the line with us right now. What I would want you to do is make sure you get your questions into our chat tab or Q&A tab. I will try to answer as many in real time as possible, and then we'll hopefully have some to save towards the end. Uh, also, other members of the Red Hat team are here, like John. I see him online, so he can also answer questions. So do throw questions into the, into the chat tab, into the Q&A tab, and we're going to really have a lot of fun today. Now, we're going to be talking about this thing called Quarkus, this supersonic subatomic Java, where if you love Java and you want to see Java running insanely fast, insanely small, and having a lot of fun while you develop it, that's what Quarkus is all about. And Georgios is here to show us the spring variant. So if you're just in the spring APIs and what we've been doing in that category, you got the right man for the job because he's going to rock and roll right through that. If you can't hear or can't see, meaning you can't hear or see what I'm saying right now, refresh your browser and turn off all those ad blockers. That's the secret for this. All right, let's turn it over to Georgios. Georgios, you're up. Hey, hey, Burr. Hey, folks. First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, thanks for everybody for attending and um, let's get, let's get the show on the road. So uh, I know you've heard a lot about Quarkus through all these awesome sessions here. So I'm going to go through uh, insanely small amount of slides really quickly since I know you've already heard all this great stuff about Quarkus. I'll just refresh your memory real quick and then we'll go straight to the demo. Uh, that's the plan at least. So let me start sharing. And let's go. All right. So here we go. Small amount of slides, and then we'll go through the demo. OK, so spring apps on Quarkus. What are we going to show here? Uh, we're going to talk about initially about Quarkus. So you know Quarkus from all the previous sessions that it's an uh, open source stack for writing Java applications that usually target uh, like microservices or serverless environments. Um, anything uh, cloud native. Uh, the four main benefits of Quarkus that we've uh, iterated and we've talked about over and over again, and we'll see uh, a lot of these benefits today, are first developer joy. Developer joy, by developer joy, we mean that uh, you as developers, as users, when you use Quarkus, we want you to feel that you are really productive, that you really get your job done really quickly and have fun while, while doing it. Uh, we'll really see what that means in the demo. The uh, second part, which is uh, super uh, important, and it's obviously supersonic, supersonic and subatomic Java. What that means is that uh, the applications you develop uh, will be very small and will be very well suited to be deployed to the cloud. Um, the third benefit is that uh, Quarkus unifies the imperative and reactive programming models. Uh, we won't have time to talk about that today, but um, I'm sure you'll find some excellent material out there for uh, using uh, reactive stuff in Quarkus. And finally, that Quarkus brings you the best of breeds, uh, uh, libraries and frameworks and standards that you've uh, been accustomed to all these years and that you've been using in your job applications in order to be productive. Uh, you've probably seen this slide before and you, you'll see some very big names out there. I mean, all the stuff that you typically use in all your uh, enterprise grade Java applications, Quarkus really has you covered. Uh, you'll see like MicroProfile, you'll see Hibernate, you'll see Rest Easy, Camel, all the great stuff. You'll see all the cloud native stuff, Kubernetes, OpenShift. And in the middle there, uh, you'll see the spring compatibility layer, which is what we're going to be talking about and demoing um, right now. So that was it for the slides. I hope, hopefully I didn't bore you too much. I'm sure you already know all this stuff. So let's get into the stuff that you um, might have not seen yet. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to initially create a Quarkus application using our command line tooling. Uh, you don't have to use this command line tooling. You can uh, just use code.quarkus.io, which is our excellent um, uh, for code generation page where you can create a pa uh, project. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a Spring Web uh, extension. If you see here, I'm going to be using the Spring Web, which will create a Quarkus application that's already set up to use um, Spring stuff. And I obviously made a mistake right off the bat. Uh, I used the wrong package name, so let's do DevNation2. And that will hopefully work, and I got it right this time. So I'll open this in my IDE. And let's see what we have here. So what this generates 
is a regular maintenance project. And uh, the difference between this and the other Quarkus projects that you might have seen is that it adds the Quarkus Spring Web um, dependency, which is the dependency that we'll use to create or REST APIs. And because it added that, uh, you won't see any JAXR REST resources for creating REST applications. What you'll see is your regular Spring controllers. So this is a Spring controller uh, that you would normally have and uh, be used to if you're using Spring Boot or uh, maybe even Spring Framework without Spring Boot. Uh, so this is all just normal stuff. What we're going to do now, though, is kick off uh, our developer joy and start being productive. So how do we do that? We do MVN Quark is the dev. So what this does is that it launches the dev mode. The dev mode is the awesome mode that Quarkus has that allows me to um, write code and instantaneously see uh, feedback, see the results of what I'm doing without having to, um, to restart the application at all. So uh, I started the application here. I'll go real quickly and make sure that everything wor is working. Uh, so this is uh, the Spring Controller that it was automatically generated for me. It just returns a hello. I'll change that real quick here in the IDE. We won't do anything else, just refresh. And I immediately see that. So uh, you see, immediately you see something that you're not used to in the spring world, but that you, that um, is so vital to Quarkus that you write your changes in the IDE or your whatever text editor you use, and you immediately see the changes. So I'll go ahead and add make this just a tad more complicated. I'll add a request param. Uh, the request param here is that um, I'm just going to add a query parameter. So uh, request param is what Spring uses for uh, the query parameters. I'm going to give it a default value of world, which means that if I don't pass the query parameter, it'll be hello world. If I go here and add dev nation, then it's hello dev nation. See, instant changes, that, that's all great. Uh, but I'm just returning a string here, right? Strings are boring. Um, so what we want to do is we want to return some JSON. JSON is what every web service uses these days. So I'm going to create a class. Uh, I'll say string, um, let's say message. And I'll create a constructor and add my getters and everything. And then here, I'll go and change the result to be a greeting. And I just refresh and I magically see this stuff happening, right? I, ma I magically see JSON uh, just by writing the, the spring stuff that I already know. So uh, let this sink in. This isn't like a uh, different spring than what you're used to. This is you just write your spring stuff that you've uh, no doubt have been writing for a while now since uh, a lot of people use Spring Boot. You just write this stuff and you're immediately productive. And you're, you're so much more productive than you're used to because of this uh, dev mode that uh, automatically allows you to see your changes. Let's make some more changes and make this a little more interesting. Let's say greeting service. So a greeting service is what I'll use to, like, let's say, encapsulate the, the business logic here. I'll say hi, nay. Um, I'll go back here. I'll inject this greeting service into, into my controller. Greeting service greet name. And I think I did a fairly good job here. Um, notice I didn't use any add inject here because this is a, there's only one constructor, so we can automatically deduce. Um, that that's what's supposed to be used, just like Spring. I refresh, oops, and I see an error. Uh, and that's great, right? That's great that I can see the error right inside the browser. I see it immediately. And it's the, the error staring me in, in the face, right? It just tells me unsatisfied dependency of type creating service. And what does that mean? I mean, I created a creating service, but I forgot to make it a bean. So all of us have uh, made this mistake before. So all we do is just add a spring a service annotation, or I could use component or whatever I like. I'll refresh, and I just see my changes. And that, that's great, right? So developer productivity and developer joy doesn't mean that only the happy path works. It means that uh, I get meaningful feedback immediately when I make a mistake.
Um, and now I'm going to top this off by, let's say, making this configurable. Because uh, I don't want this, like, this high thing to be hard-coded, right? So I'll just I'll make this configurable. I'll have a prefix. And I'll go val Oops, that was wrong. value. Value is what we all know from Spring uh, to inject configuration. So I'll go greeting prefix. And then I'll add the prefix here. Um, and I should see more awesomeness. And I do see more awesomeness from Quarkus, not from me, that is, uh, because I made a mistake. I said, nope, I'm, I get immediately see what the mistake is. I see no config value exists for greeting prefix, and that couldn't be more uh, obvious, right? So I obviously forgot to go here and say greeting prefix is uh, hola. Hola, damnation. So I made changes not only to the source code, I made changes to configuration, and they were picked up immediately. So that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe let's take it a step further, and uh, let's say I want to post something uh, but I want to also have uh, validation on what I post. Uh, so for that, what I would do is that I would add a new dependency, which I'm going to say, which um, is going to be the Quarkus Hibernate Validator, which is going to provide me with uh, validation for my input. So let's say I go to the controller. I'll go public static class input. And let's say, I don't know what to call it, so I'll just call it field. It's not really imaginative, but it'll do. Um, and then I, wanna, I want to, let's say, I want to return a greeting, but I'll say, like, from input. And I'll, this will be input, and this will be a post mapping, because uh, I want to post this. Post mapping is what uh, Spring uses these days. And I'll make this valid. And I'll add a constraint here. I'll add like a simple constraint like not blank. Uh, what that means is that when I post to this uh, method, uh, then I expect that the field will not be blank. And uh, let's say new greeting high from from, and I'll say input get field. Now, since this is a post, I can't really use the browser. Uh, without developing a UI, that is, which is something I don't want to do now. So I'll go ahead and use uh, HTTPy, which is an awesome uh, command line tool. It's uh, called curl. Some people call it curl for humans. So I'll just use that. And I'll just go post localhost 8080 greeting, and I'll say field is George. Uh, so I post that, and I get hi from George, right? Because that's what I expected here now. Uh, if I do a blank field, I should get, um, I should not get an HTTP 200. I'll get an HTTP 400, which is a bad request. See, and uh, I got, uh, I didn't specify an exception handler or anything, so I just got the uh, out of the box stuff, which tells me that uh, the input field was blank. So you see that um, all the stuff you're used to from, uh, from Spring uh, Web Controllers, REST controllers just works out of the box, right? And it works great with Quarkus. Uh, well, that's cool, but you know, without a database or anything, there's only so much stuff we can do. Uh, so the next uh, logical step is to use a database. And the way we use databases usually in Spring is to utilize the Spring Data GPA um, abstractions. So what we'll do here is we'll add one more dependency. Uh, we'll call it, we'll use the Quarkus Spring Data GPA extension. And because I'm going to, I'm using, uh, I'm running an H2 database locally, I'll just add the uh, GDBC H2. This is like the Quarkus extension to talk to H2. So that's the, I've got that out of the way. And let's go and create a book. The book is the entity I'm going to be using. I'm going to call it book. It's going to be super simple. I'm just going to add uh, integer BID, which is going to be the book ID. And I'll give it a few fields. I'll give it name and let's say integer publication year. So those are the only fields I'm going to have. I'm going to add some getters here just to make the serialization easier. Those are the only fields I'm going to add. 
Uh, and in typical uh, spring data fashion, spring boot, spring data fashion, I'll just I'll access this book from the database using a book repository. So this is the pattern that Spring Data GPA uses, where you extend a repository. You say which uh, entity the repository is for and what the type of the ID is. So book repository, I don't have to write any code except this, like just an interface that extends uh, Spring Data GPA's uh, CRUD repository. And now we want to be able to access that. Um, so I'll write another controller. I'll call this the book controller. Let's see, request the rest controller, request mapping, and we'll say this is this is under book. I'll inject the, the repository, book repository, constructor injection, as we're told so often. We should do and public let's say i'll make this an iterable of books and i'll say find all for the book repository find all i'll make this a get mapping uh, so i think i'm done with coding this but i still have the i have to configure um quarkus to talk to the database so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to uh paste the configuration i already have so I'm, like i said i'm talking to a local h2 database um, I'm going to use the H2 dialect, and I'm just for the ease of this demo, I'm going to be dropping and creating the database every time Quarkus, um, I, every time I load a change of Quarkus. And now this awesome feature that Quarkus has is that it allows me to seed the database really easily by adding some data to the import SQL file. Import SQL will allow me to just add a few SQL statements and uh, so I can have some books to uh, interact with. So these are the, a few books I've been reading lately. And I'll be using them to show that uh, hopefully the code I wrote actually works. Uh, so what do we need here, right? All we need here now is to go to um, book and hopefully I'll see all my books. If everything goes well, and I do. I mean, uh, I have of the six books I added, I can access them immediately. So let, let's reflect on this part a bit, right? Uh, you saw that I never restarted Quarkus. All I did was just add a few dependencies, write my code, and I immediately got access to the database. Like, this was so easy. It took me like what, five minutes, maybe 10 minutes uh, to write something that is that utilizes APIs that I already know. And I love the uh, Spring APIs. I see th these are all Spring uh, APIs. See what you see the imports. There's only Spring stuff. You go to the repository, you see only Spring stuff here as well. And Quarkus just worked out of the box so fast. This, this stuff worked immediately. Uh, so that, that that's pretty, I think, is uh, pretty mind-blowing. Uh, we can do more stuff here, obviously, right? So uh, the book control, let's say I'll add another method. And I'll, call, I'll say list, like I would do with Spring, like with Spring Data GP. I want to add some custom methods. Uh, so I'll go find by publication year between integer lower, integer higher. So what this will be doing is um, this will allow me to to uh, query the database for books that are published uh, between certain years. Um, let's see how do we do this. Get mapping. I'll say year. I'll say lower and higher. Path variable, this path variable, that's correct. Another path variable, and then I'll say book repository, find lower, higher. Uh, so I'll go here again, and then I'll go year, uh, let's say 2010, 2020, I see all my books immediately. Like It's like I didn't even know that uh, Quarkus uh, dev mode was in play here, it just worked immediately. So. And then if I want to narrow this down, I can say 2017, 2018, immediately I have all my books here. So I think this is, uh, I think this is pretty amazing. Now, uh, one other thing that uh, we've heard about a lot about when it comes to Quarkus, right, is that it, you can create a native image. Uh, a native image is, um, is a, the, pr the creation of native image is done by GraalVM which uh, takes our jars, the jar that Quarkus creates, and it creates a, a native binary. Um, 
Well, I just think it makes that super easy to do. So all I would need is like MVN clean package. I'm gonna, I would skip tests. You, you should do this. Uh, but I'll just show this real, uh, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna let it create the native image because that will take a couple minutes. And uh, we have better things to do than sit around, wait to, wait for this to complete in a couple minutes. But uh, well, what I wanted to show you is that you create with a simple command line flag, which is the minus D native, uh, I could create the native image and Quarkus will take care of all the, the difficult things of creating native image with the Graal VM. So I'm not going to let that complete, but what I'm going to do is that uh, I've already created it for you uh, before starting the demo. So I'm just going to start it here. DevNation. Uh, you saw this. This uh, You didn't even have the time to see how fast this happened. Uh, so I started the application. The, let's sit... Uh, Let's uh, note this point. This is a Spring, uh, a Quarkus application with Spring API. So Spring Data JPA, Spring Web. It talks to the database, the A2 database. It has Hibernate Validator, and it started in 18 milliseconds. Uh, I think you'll be very hard pressed to see anything faster than that. And let's just make sure that it works. And it did. I mean, uh, native image, 18 milliseconds startup time. And let's see another great thing about it. Um, let's see how much memory it takes up and uh, let's so the resident set size for this was 42 megabyte um, 42 megabyte for a database a Java application that talks to a database I think is pretty amazing I uh, hope you all agree with that so that concludes the first part but let's say the coding part of my demo um, the next part I wanted to show you real quick is that how does this uh, why does this actually matter in a cloud environment? And what I'm going to do to try to show you this is that I have a, I've created uh, with, well, Burr really created this actually, and I, uh, let's say, was inspired by it. So this is a, it, it's the same application written in three different ways. It's a vanilla Spring Boot application. So uh, I'm using Spring Latest, Spring Boot 2.2.1. Uh, it's just a uh, Spring application that returns some JSON, right? That's it. Uh, the other version of the application is the Quarkus application that basically uses, it's the same Spring controller, uh, but it uses the Quarkus stuff, the Quarkus Spring stuff that I showed earlier. Uh, and it, it's the Quarkus 101 final latest version. And then I also have the same version of the application written in Node.js. Uh, don't even ask me how I did this. I don't even know uh, since I'm not a Node fan. Uh, but I, well, what I wanted to show you with this is that a lot of people use Node.js because it has a low memory footprint and starts real fast. So they use it a lot for the cloud. So what I want to show you is that how Quarkus compares to these two uh, environments. So what I have here for you is um, I'm going to, what I have here on the top of the screen is a script that is um, counting how many ready pods we have in our Kubernetes cluster. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that I've pre-deployed these three applications, these simple applications, to uh, OpenShift cluster. Uh, and for those of you who, who don't know, OpenShift is um, what is um, Red Hat's uh, enterprise um, version of uh, Kubernetes. So you can, but you can just think of it as Kubernetes. So I've deployed the Spring Boot application, which is on the left, um, Node.js application in the middle, Quarkus application on the right. I've deployed it to uh, OpenShift. And what I want to do now is that because I'm using um, OpenShift serverless technology, which is based on Knative, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a burst of traffic and I'm going to see how quickly um, my cluster can scale up uh, these, uh, these applications, which Let's uh, say again, these are the same application. One is in vanilla Spring Boot, one's OGS, one's Quarkus. So I'm going to start simulating the traffic first for the Spring Boot version, then for the Node version, and finally for the Quarkus version. So uh, Quarkus is at a disadvantage here because I started the burst last. But what I want you to um, feast your eyes on is the top, right? the top of the script that's uh, monitoring how fast these can scale up. So we immediately see that although Quarkus was the last one to start rec receiving traffic, it immediately scaled up to 13 um, pods 
without the other ones having scaled any uh, to, they just have the one pod. Now Node.js is coming up. So you see how long it took for the other, for Node.js to come up. Vanilla Spring Boot isn't even up yet. There's still one pod running. So in a, a, a real environment, you would have missed all this. If you were running with the Vanilla Spring Boot, you would have missed all this traffic. Uh, and you saw that if the same application, if you had it in Quarkus, uh, it would immediately start serving your large traffic boost and burst. Um, let's see now, the, the Spring Boot is trying to come up. Um, so my OpenShift, my OpenShift uh, console here is showing me that there are uh, a lot of pods running and Spring Boots are trying to come up, but they're not. So, and take it, uh, you should note that this cluster is a fairly slow cluster, right? So these are starting up slower than they would. But in any case, the difference between the three types of applications are would be the same, whatever type of cluster you have. The other great thing to note here is that OpenShift will show me the top 10 memory uh, consuming pods. And you can see here that they are uh, all from the vanilla Spring Boot. None of the Quarkish uh, applications even makes it into the top 10 uh, memory consumers. What, so you, you immediately see that you have an application that runs, that starts so quickly that you can actually uh, serve burst traffic and it takes up a lot less memory, which means that you can pack in a lot more of the instances of the application. So I really hope that um, this whirlwind, whirlwind tour of what we can do with Quarkus and the spring on Quarkus uh, really gave you the opportunity to see uh, the power that uh, exists uh, behind Quarkus and uh, what we've done uh, with it so far. Um, so I, I think I stopped sharing now. Uh, so I think what we have. All right. Um, what we, have, like, we do have a couple moments. For questions, Bert? We do have a couple moments for questions, and I think there's one, one in particular that's very appropriate for you, and that is. How are we going to manage keeping up with the upstream spring? So if spring continues to evolve and move along, um, how how are, what is your plan for addressing that? Yes. I'm, I'm hearing you. Hearing anything. Oh. Well, we can talk this way. <laughs> so the question is, how do we keep up with the upstream spring? As spring evolves and continues moving oh. forward, what are your plans to continue keeping up? Okay, do uh, you want me to take this one or? That's you. Okay, great. Uh, okay, so the idea here is to, uh, we want to provide like the most common features for sp that spring developers uh, use, right? Uh, we obviously can't compete like in bringing every spring feature uh, that, that's out there. But what we want to do is we want you to use the most, be able to use the most common spring features and be able to use them in a way that is like, let's say better than you would use with vanilla spring boot in the sense that you have the, that they're faster. You, it's faster for you to develop and uh, applications you build are, uh, have a much uh, smaller runtime footprint. Um, no, now, uh, we don't, currently we have Spring BI, Spring Web, and Spring Data APA. Uh, in a few days, we'll have uh, Spring Security support as well. And then uh, we have a lot of more stuff on the pipeline, but uh, we, we really want to hear from the community, like what the, the most important things and most used things are um, from people and what they want to see from this spring effort on Quarkus. Okay. And a question related to Spring REST controllers. Do we have support for hate OS or hate EOs, depending on how you pronounce that? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another. We don't have that yet, but that's one thing that we have heard from a few people. And uh, like the more we hear from the more we hear from the community for the stuff, then uh, easier it is for us to justify. Okay, like let's do go the extra mile and uh, put this in. Okay, and I'm just checking a couple of things. It looks like we covered most every question that I can think of, at least the ones we can cover in the time that we have remaining, because we are out of time. But I really enjoyed the presentation. I really loved the demonstration. That was absolutely fantastic. John Klingham has been there answering questions also. 
Uh, you did show things like Spring JPA, so that's the at repository syntax. I remember you covering things like that. So otherwise, I think awesome job here. We had a huge crowd on the line today. I apologize if we missed your question. They were coming in fast and furious, but do feel free to run. Mm -hmm. uh, check out Georgios on Twitter, and actually I will add his Twitter account to the chat so you can check him out on Twitter and find him there. You can always come to the Corcus uh Google group, and that's where we all hang out, and Zillip group, as John says right there in the chat. Definitely bring all that to us, and uh, we'll, please bring us your questions. And if there is something in the Spring universe that you truly must have and love, please let us know. We're very interested in hearing about that use case. Again, thank you all for your time. Georgios, awesome job as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Burr. Thanks, everybody, for attending. It was, it was great being here. Thanks so much. Absolutely. everyone.